Hi, my name is Nathan Tintel, and I'm one of the authors of Introduction to Statistical Investigations, a novel textbook for introductory statistics, which utilizes simulation-based inference methods to develop students' understanding of the core logic and scope of statistical inference. In this video, we will show you how we start our course by building on students' natural intuition about statistical inference, providing students a strong foundation on which to layer deeper conceptual ideas throughout the remainder of the course. Let's now take a look at some introductory statistics students who are learning about inference for the very first time at the beginning of the second week of the course by thinking about a published research study involving two dolphins named Doris and Buzz. Like this. Dr. Bastian brings these two dolphins named Doris and Buzz, and here's Doris and, and here's Buzz, and uh, he brings them into this essentially big pool of water, and over time trains them to respond to some visual cues. And so Dr. Bastian had on the side of this pool an If a light on the side of their tank came up. on and glowed steadily, they learned to push the button on the right side, whereas if the light flashed intermittently, they learned to push the button on the left. The researcher then placed a screen down through the middle of the pool so that Doris could see the light and Buzz had access to the button. The researcher now tested to see if Doris could communicate to Buzz whether to push the button on the left or the button on the right by testing the dolphin 16 times, sometimes with the light flashing and sometimes not. Buzz pushed the correct button 15 out of 16 times. After telling this story, I asked students to talk with their neighbors about whether they thought that dolphins were able to communicate abstract ideas. Over the next little while, out of the next 16 times, Buzz pushes the correct button 15 out of 16 times. And so my question for you is, if Buzz pushes the correct button 15 out of 16 times, do you think that dolphins can communicate abstract ideas? ideas. So here's what I want you to do now. I want you to, with a partner, okay, one or two people next to you, talk about that question. Based on the story I've told you, based on what you know, do you think dolphins can communicate abstract ideas? So we're going to take two or three minutes and have you discuss that in a small group, and then I want your groups to be ready to share sort of some of your thinking on this, okay? <laughs> All right, we'll take another like 20 or 30 seconds or so. And then we'll have your individual groups share a little bit. All right, let's, let's have some sharing. So the question is, we have this researcher. He does this study. We observe the data 15 out of 16 times Buzz pushes the correct button. And the question is, the researcher's interested. Can, communi uh, can dolphins communicate abstract ideas? We were just saying that uh, we do believe that dolphins can communicate abstract ideas because if it was just random choice, there'd be a 50-50 chance that he could choose the right button, but 15 out of 16 is a lot bigger gap uh, between 50% and whatever 15 out of 16 is. So therefore, we do believe that the dolphins can communicate some type of way to choose the right button. How could we show that to someone? How could we demonstrate that? Does anyone have any ideas about how we could demonstrate that to someone? Yeah. Um, you could run some sort of trial, like where you flip a coin maybe 16 times so that you have a 50-50 chance of getting one result and see what you get. The great thing about this example is that students' intuition is correct. 15 out of 16 isn't the kind of thing that happens just by chance if Buzz is randomly choosing which button to push. And students also have a great feel for how they would convince others that their intuition is correct. After someone in the class suggests flipping coins, we take the coins out and have students flip coins and build their own simulation distribution on the board. Then students reflect on how this helps firm up their gut feeling. As students saw and articulated, getting 15 out of 16 correct is rarely the kind of thing that happens by chance. No one in the class got heads 15 out of 16 times. We then transition from a tactile simulation to a computer-based simulation using free online applets which scaffold the tactile learning experience by having a computer flip many, many sets of 16 coins. Start. Well, I think it's pretty clear that Doris can tell Buzz which button to press. Okay. I mean, 15 out of 16 times is pretty impressive. Ultimately, um, students' initial intuition is confirmed, and they can explain that, indeed, 
15 out of 16 is highly unlikely if Buzz is just guessing. Because 15 out of 16 rarely occurs if Buzz is indeed guessing. By building on students' intuition about drawing conclusions from data at the start of the course, and embracing active learning strategies, tactile simulations, and intuitive technology, we create a trajectory that sets students up for successful statistical sure, okay. learning, so as we've documented in numerous student populations and classroom settings. Okay. To learn more about simulation-based inference okay. and how we build on this foundational approach to discuss traditional statistical techniques, visit our website, where you can see more sample activities, view a table of contents, get links to applets, read assessment results, and request review copies of the textbook.